suddenly there's this 2018 interaction between Tucker Carlson and Cornell West floating around the internet. It's making waves on Twitter. I'm not really sure why it came up, but I will admit that I absolutely love the fact that it did come up because Cornell West is, in my opinion, one of the best communicators in the country, if not this planet. He has this way of connecting with people, more importantly, using the right language to persuade people, even people as horrendous as Tucker Carlson. Let's take a look. Fundamental commitment is to the dignity of ordinary people and to make sure they can live lives of decency. So it's not an ism, no brother, it's about decency, it's about fairness, right. it's about the accountability of the powerful vis-a-vis -vis those who have less power. The workplace, women dealing with the household, gays, lesbians, trans, black people, indigenous peoples, immigrants. How do we ensure that they are treated decently and that the powerful don't in any way manipulate, subjugate and exploit them? Well, I mean, if that's what democratic socialism is, then I'm basically on board. I do think that ordinary people, middle class people ought to have Absolutely. dignity. And I think that our current systems make it hard for them to have dignity. So I, I agree Absolutely. with all of that. Now, look, I love what Cornell West had to say there. I think that he's absolutely right. Um, but. I'm not a dummy, of course, I don't believe for a second that Tucker Carlson um, found it in his soul to uh, all of a sudden support democratic socialism because he genuinely doesn't care about ensuring that every single group of people have a life of decency. As we know, um, he has been pretty brutal and vicious toward um, communities of color, toward immigrants. And so again, that video was 28 from 2018. Let me give you a refresher on the kind of things that Tucker Tucker Carlson says today, here's a video from March of 2020. Sanders is a self-described democratic socialist. That's bad, there's no doubt. But is it worse than what he believes on policy? It's not even close. You know what's way worse than anything he's ever said about Fidel Castro? His belief, his argument that anyone on the planet who sneaks into the United States should get free health care and free college tuition. That's the case he's making. He clearly doesn't care about the consequences of his plans. Why? There's really only one possible answer, because he doesn't care about the United States or its future. It's obvious that Sanders hates the country he seeks to lead. There's no other explanation for it, and that is a very dangerous quality in a president. The total cost of Sanders' campaign promises, approaching 100 trillion. That's five times the size, not just of our government spending, but of America's entire economy. Where's all that money gonna come from? It's called modern monetary theory, and Bernie Sanders is a strict adherent to it. I really truly believe that. And in this theory, taxes and regulations are not used to raise money, especially taxes. They're used to punish people that you don't like, punish industries that you don't like, and to take money out of the money supply if you need to do that to help battle inflation. But for the most part, it's used to punish industries, and then you control the economy by essentially controlling how much money you're printing and you funnel it into the areas of the economy that you want to grow, and then you punish the people you don't like with taxes. And then instead of funneling it to rich people, I'm going to punish rich people with taxes and regulations. I'm gonna punish businesses that I don't like, like fossil fuel companies, and then I'm gonna funnel all this money down to you people, the voters. That's what he's promising, essentially. It's 21st well, he's century He's really saying I'm gonna funnel it all to That's myself. It's gonna, it's gonna <laughs> accrue in the form of power. <laughs> this is really scary. That's exactly man. right. Justin, thank you for that it's explanation. Whoa, Nando, I'm really glad that uh, Bernie Sanders isn't the one who won the uh, Democratic primary and it's a moderate like Biden um, because you know, people like Tucker Carlson would have really gone after Bernie hard. Whereas they're super easy and understanding toward uh, Joe Biden and they're not in any way referring to him as a Marxist or a socialist, right? <laughs> it's just amazing. Yeah. No, it's uh, you know it's they're gonna accuse everyone of being uh, crazy, kind of like communist anyway. So it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's I, that those two clips are interesting to see back to back because it shows like Cornell West. I mean, obviously, like you said, one of the best communicators that we have on our side, just explaining things from a purely humanistic um, kind of basic decency uh, standpoint, not trying to get into. Uh, 
things about the culture war or anything like that. Just avoiding kind of the 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 hot button political issues of the day for something that transcends that, you know, about human decency. And like when you're kind of confronted with that head on, um, if you're someone like Tucker Carlson, you can't. You can't respond to that. There's no response to it. Whereas if you, if like you mm. start getting into a litany of issues that are just kind of currently in the news for whatever reason, they have all those arguments kind of very well tooled and can come back at you in no problem. And you just get into a back and forth when you kind of transcend that um, and speak to the basic decency and, but also in, in, importantly, framing it in class terms as a conflict between the powerful and those who do not have power you know there's no one can disagree with you right um, but then it's interesting when he when he criticizes bernie tucker carlson he can he he does it on nationalist grounds and this is something that i spoke in my commentary last week on jacobin um, about right wing populism it's where they 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 do not they try not to talk so much about the left's critique of capitalism more they try to talk about it as on the on the frame that they're familiar with, which is hardcore nationalism, right? So he says that like Bernie mm-hmm. wants everyone to come into the United States and have free health care. And that's just like gonna have a horde of immigrants that's gonna change the sort of fabric of American society. So that's like, that's the only response that Tucker Carlson can come up with. And all of a sudden this like fantasy about, you know, Bernie being an adherent to modern monet- modern monetary theory, which of, of which there is no evidence. Um, but then right. the guy was like talking about like, um, yeah, he's using taxes to punish things like he doesn't like, like fossil fuel companies and, and channel that money to regular people. And I'm like that sounds that sounds pretty good. I don't know about you guys. Uh, I'll take that. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. No, but you make a you make a really good point about the framing because if you really stop and think about it, anyone who wants to make a persuasive argument in favor of the types of social programs that um, Cornell West and Bernie Sanders are in favor of uh, can easily do it if you use the type of framing that we heard from Dr. West in that video, right? This is. Because I think deep down, and I know it's hard to believe this, especially considering like the climate that we're living in. I think deep down, even the people who say horrible things do want to at least be good people. I think that they do want most people, everyone to live a life of decency, right? And when they're confronted with that framing, I think human nature pushes them in the direction of accepting that as opposed to like who, who wants to say or admit who genuinely believes like no, no, I think that there are people who should not live a life of decency. I'm sure that kind of person exists. I'm not trying to pretend like you know we live in some crazy utopia where people are perfect. But I think most people want the same things. And unfortunately, especially when you're on the left, you need to find almost the perfect framing to cut through yeah. just this propaganda machine, which by the way, Tucker Carlson is very much part of. Absolutely, absolutely, and he, you know, it's, it's. He, I mean, Tucker Carlson is. I mean, I've followed his career for a long time, ever since he wrote a very, uh, a very long, kind of well-written but like very right-wing piece about Elian Gonzalez uh, back in like the late '90s, and he was like this young wonderkin kind of conservative that then got his own C- show on CNN, um, and he was like this cartoon elitist that would wear a bow tie, um, and now he's sort of reframing himself or rebranding himself as this sort of working man's hero when he's just like a cartoon elite and always has been his entire life. Um, and so but 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 you're right that like when when you frame those it's it, that's that's the thing is like message discipline around the framing and it's you 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 advocate for basic human decency and you identify the true enemies, right? The true enemies are basically the people who control the society. Rich and powerful people; those are the enemies. You have to focus on that, but also do it in a way that comes from a place of humanism, love, transcendence, all that kind of wishy-washy stuff that actually is important and actually makes a makes a big difference. And actually, you know, people Definitely. respond to kind of intuitively. You know, I mean, it's it's cliche at this point, but like that's what Martin Luther King did. He like always understood who the enemies were, but like spoke in these in this universal language of like love and human solidarity um, and that that's what's gonna set us free. Um, And once you're, that's that's the language you have to use. The sort of uh, just going through like the whatever's going on in the day, it's it's gonna be a dead end. They're always gonna be able to win that. They're always gonna be able to win the culture war. Um, It's just, it's it's very rough terrain for people on the left to compete in um, just because they, you know they control all the levers of power, all the levers of the media, and they'll always be able to win that that argument. 
Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.